For all my vegans who miss crunch wraps, check out Vegan Grill in St. Mark's, Williamsburg, and the Bronx. You're welcome and enjoy. What I eat in a day is a vegan who eats whatever the fuck she wants. Breakfast was a yogurt bowl with berries, and then I had an iced almond latte. When I got back home, I did some meal prep, not just for today, but for the next couple days. It was rice with sun-dried tomato pesto, seitan, cauliflower, and roasted broccoli. Snacked on a couple of these little baby bananas, and then I had this Soon kimchi noodle soup. I love this brand. Late dinner was a burger, and I had it with ketchup, mustard, and a couple plantain chips. With this dumb lavash bread because I didn't have any buns. Jonathan Mora is a third generation pizza maker who just made the move to New York from Miami, where he has quite the reputation for creative and eye-catching pizza toppings. He set up shop with Vegan on the Fly, serving familiar plant-based slices, but also options like s'mores, calzones, buffalo chicken, and baked ziti. We may even work on a shawarma pizza together if I can get my grandma in on it. She knows how to do the seasoning better than me. Together, let's give Mora Pizza a warm welcome to the Big Apple. I never understood the hype behind the McRib. I know that there's a huge cult following, but because of that, I never got to try it before I ever went vegan. The other day though, I was at Vegan on the Fly and they asked me if I wanted to try the Nick Rib, named after Nick, the guy who developed the recipe. And while I'm not a huge barbecue person, I get it. It was pretty darn good. What I eat in a day as a vegan who eats whatever the heck she wants. First a cold cut sandwich and two clementines. Then I had one of my favorite instant noodle soups. Look how hyped I am to eat these noodles at work. Wanted something sweet, so I had these Skittle type candies. Then some proper meal prep. Sun-dried tomato pesto rice with cauliflower, broccoli, and seitan. Also had a side of cucumbers that I dropped down my hoodie. And I ended the night the same way I started, with a cold cut sandwich. This time it's from the store though, so it ended up being much better. And a little piece of chocolate from Trader Joe's. That's it, Good night. What I eat in a day is a vegan who eats whatever the heck she wants. Italian cold cut sandwich. Bowl of cherries. Homemade coffee jelly and soy milk. Another cold cut sandwich. Homemade pizza. Sun-dried tomato pesto rice, seitan, and sriracha. Burger and mashed potatoes. That's all by. First eaten over 300 years ago, did you know that calzone means trousers or stockings? It's because they were commonly sold as street food and you would stick it in your pants for later. I'm assuming calzones back then were more sandwich sized than the big boys we serve in the US today, right? This wouldn't fit in anyone's pants. If you're planning a New York City trip, write this one down. First opened in 2016, Very Fresh Noodles has quickly become a local favorite for hand pulled noodles. And for good reason. My go to dish is the spicy noodles with mock duck. The sauce is full of cumin, Sichuan peppercorn, and chili oil, which tingles your tongue as you eat. I tried the cleaver smashed cucumbers for the first time today with sweet chili, garlic, and sesame soy vinaigrette, and now I need to get it every time too. Give them a visit in Chelsea Market and trust you will not be disappointed. Come with me to visit New York City's oldest vegan spot. Open since 1991, Caravan of Dreams is organic and kosher, known for its raw dishes and veggie forward meals. I definitely recommend trying the nori roll or sampler platter if you'd like to dabble in raw food. And for my gluten-free friends, basically the whole menu was friendly or adaptable. Enjoy and say hi to Angel the founder while you're at it. One of the newest vegan spots in Chelsea Market is Pia, a plant-based Mexican counter and wine bar. With an emphasis on fresh produce from local farms, the dishes are both colorful and so delicious. I enjoyed everything I tasted, but my two favorite dishes were the elote and squash blossom quesadilla. Definitely save this one for your next trip to Chelsea Market. Le Petit Mantra has just opened up a new location. It's more of a grab-and-go cafe with two seats inside and a small table out front, but it's just as charmingly decorated as the original spot. Like the first location, they specialize in French pastries and coffee, but my favorite treats are always the cronuts and Queen Amon. If you're looking for something specific, make sure to go early because they sell out fast, for good reason. Once every couple months or so from having a bad night, I know one thing can cheer me up and that is Jarrell's Better Burger. These burgers are some of the best I've ever had and they have milkshake shakes with crinkle cut fries so perfectly crispy never fails to turn my night around. Inspired by traditional techniques, Monk's Meats has been serving a plant-based barbecue in New York City for over 10 years. And it was through them that I first was exposed to the beautiful art of making seitan. Constantly perfecting his craft, Chris serves Monk's Meats sandwiches, wings, and my absolute favorite, smoked ribs, just look at them, out of Star Bar in Brooklyn and street fairs such as Smorgasburg across New York City. 
Join me as I shop for and fill a community fridge in my neighborhood. Hi, my name is Rebecca, and one of the ways my subscribers and I give back is by filling community fridges around New York City. I've received some comments about the type of food I usually shop for, like why don't I include rice or pasta? And that's because shelf-stable goods are often provided by food pantries and outreach programs. But a balanced diet needs fresh produce and complementary foods, like milk, sauces, and dressings. And that's where the fridges come in. If you don't think there's one near you, check. You might be surprised. For a filling meal at about $5, look no further than Joe's Steam Rice Roll in Canal Market. A rice roll is basically a large, flat rice noodle, filled, folded, and I like mine topped with peanut sauce, chili oil, and sesame sauce. One of my favorite foods to eat on a budget. If you asked me who had the best falafel in New York City, I would tell you my grandma. But since most people don't have the pleasure of trying her food, the next best spot is Met Moon's. For $5, you can have a stuffed falafel pita with lettuce, tomato, tahini, and if you can handle it, their signature hot sauce. Grab one for yourself and see why they've been a New York City favorite for over 50 years. This beautiful spread can be found at Bells, a higher-end plant-based restaurant and brewery. My favorite things on the table were the mushroom pesto pizza and grilled Caesar salad, but not pictured are delicious giant cookies we had for dessert. The cocktail menu was also outstanding, making it the perfect new date night spot. What a vegan couple eats on a day of hiking? We started with some oatmeal, which was really good. I had a fruit, Roberto had a banana. So we went to Starbucks and Rebecca got a cold brew and I got myself a coffee. Look at that spill. <laughs> <laughs> then we started the actual hike. It was supposed to take two and a half hours, but it took four because we got lost. I had a peanut chew and Rebecca had an apple and then we had some meat sticks, yay. <laughs> <laughs> this was the view at the top. Then on the way back down, we snacked on these dates. They were so juicy. Back at the cabin, I made us sandwiches. I was still hungry, so I had mashed potatoes, veggies, and tofu, and a La Crocs. Dinner was Thai orchid. This is one of our favorite places to go to in Pennsylvania. I ordered a Thai tea. And then we got a salad, curry puffs, and our favorite, the drunken noodles. And I got another Thai tea. I opted for a ginger ale, and then we made the drive home. I had a Chico stick and a peach. My second dinner was a tuna bowl with rice and avocado and a little bit of chocolate. And then I had trail mix that I didn't have on the trail. And that's it. Bye! Bye. Big Bud Press just opened up a new storefront on 93 Orchard in New York City, and while I'm not usually a big fan of clothing drops or grand openings, I waited in line for this one. Big Bud Press makes those cute coveralls that I wear almost every single day to work, and a lot of times their clothing fits my body shape really, really well. I also love their groovy designs and how inclusive their sizing is. Their manufacturing and ethics is something I truly want to support. I found the shorts that I came to try and went into the fitting room, but unfortunately they were a bit too A-line for my body type. Overall still, it was a really great experience. The store is adorable and I will come back a different time when it's a little bit less stressful and crowded. Congratulations!